Okay, just a quick video today. I might not send it right now, but I'm actually quite ill, so I've had to quarantine. <coughs> <coughs> so I've had to quarantine myself. Um, to keep myself busy, I thought I'd put out part two of two of my rig overview. I am going to keep it brief and rather breathy and whatnot. Uh, and let's make it clear, I do know I need to tidy up cables and more importantly dust and hoover around the rig. So ignore any of that. Uh, right, without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, and here she is. So let's first of all go over a few things. My PC is an i7-8700K with a 2080 Ti. Uh, you can see there I run the Vive Pro. And in the background, I'll just mention I use the field gloves as well as a pair of Sparco shoes. I only got these because they were reduced from like 90 quid to 20 quid. So I saw that and I thought I'll snap them up. So there we go. Let's just drop them down. All right, let's move in and, and go through it bit by bit. So starting down at the bottom, obviously we've got the Heisenfeld Sprint pedals on my makeshift um, pedal mount, basically some very wide profiling, a, short, a smaller one there, a steel plate I cut, countersunk the holes and job done. It's very nice, very sturdy. Now what I've done is the back bolt there and here are done up, not very tight, they're just done up just before they snug. So that means all I have to do to move the pedals is undo that lever and that lever and the whole thing easily slides back and forward. This is mainly for flight sims, if I want to move everything back because I'm out of the way of the wheel in VR, I can move these and use them as rudder pedals. Um, oddly, when I did my original video about changing how I'd done the pedals, <laughs> after that Sim, uh, Sim Labs came out with the P1X, so they have a different way of mounting the pedals now. Basically I wanted to sink them in, have them a bit lower. Um, likewise, how I can slide my seat back and forward, which I'll go over again in a moment, I've done that, made a video, and again, uh, Simlabs came out with their own design for that. I'm sure it's a coincidence, but anyway. Uh, tower fan here, obvious, just blows nicely under, keeps me nice and cool in the summer, because simming in VR gets bleeding hot. Just a power, um, you know, power plug around the back, loads of plugs in it, and also USB ones, which is quite nice. Just moving up to my telly. It's a 43 inch, just a fairly cheap LG HDR, but obviously it's not great HDR on a cheap TV. Mounted to the wall, my little wood bracket here just to get it in position where I want. Um, some of the cables are a bit of a mess, but I'm, <laughs> I'm happy with it. Just if I make videos, there's a little light here, another light here. A fan there that blows on top of my head, which is lovely in VR on my bald head. Uh, right, second monitor again, another light wall mount, but just screwed in and holds it nicely in place. The SimLab keyboard holder uh, with a Logitech wireless keyboard. I've got this one because it lights up, so I can see what I'm doing. Although I put these on because you can't really see the F1 keys in the dark very easily. Um, Coming round, obviously I've got the Fanatec 1.5 SQ shifter. Now, because I've got the analog shifter, obviously I only really keep this in H pattern mode. Now, as you know, you can tighten it or loosen it. I have it pretty tight to the point where if I put it on shifter mode, I don't think it'll even work. It'll stay there. I never use it on sequential mode, so that's why. Pretty cool I've got this mounted, so I've got the handbrake, slightly really sticking on a road car, gear shifter, handbrake there, a nice angle, analog handbrake. Um, now something I'm very proud of really is how the analog shifter works. Um, and we're going to do this one handed. So basically if I want to use sequential shifter, I just loosen this and lift this up and it sits down on there and I do it up, it's easier two-handed and that is it look at that, beautiful that's not in the way 
obviously it's not as stiff as it can be if I hold it in place and then tighten it it'd be a lot better but it's, it's fantastic I'm quite chuffed with that um, lowering it obviously you just got to be careful because it can drop on the uh, H, uh, SQ shifter you lift it up drop it down and that's it and it just sits on sits on another one there just give it a little snug so I'm really happy with that uh, right uh, Simicube steering wheel from Simplicity the 28 newton meter job there's a raging cat um, yeah still love the steering wheel get the screen nice and close although most of them in VR um, coming around this side my SNES controller you know it's a six pound button box basically um, it gives you a d-pad I use joy to key and everything is in programmed into joy to key so I can swap rims on the fly and also these are the keyboard cursor keys and whatnot it's brilliant uh, butt kicker control there obviously the uh, emergency shut off for the wheel some messy cables around there most of them are in this box <laughs> so without that it would be a lot worse but you know it gets the job done there's the amp for the butt kicker and there's the box for the steering wheel uh, just a blue snowball mic there just on a, an arm for I think it was just a mic I don't know what that arm was for but just cheap off eBay and brings it down there we go and coming just to the seat so it's a Sparco Rev 2 seat which is for larger frame gentlemen and a cheap 40 odd quid harness on it um, and really the harness is just for a bit of immersion because you are strapped tight in a car feels better to be strapped in tight I'm all about immersion and because I've got the next level V3 motion seat under there I've um, got them under tension on bungees you've got to cross them over otherwise you feel in it the wrong way around when you're leaning over and so you feel a bit of tension when you break in also it means if I drop anything or whatnot I can actually lean forward and pick it up or reach up and change a wheel rather than having a unstrap butt kicker down there attached to the uh, V3 motion platform um, just another little thing here if I'm not using motion I don't this thing this thing can bang into the seat or just sits on here I've just stuck a, a magnet on it a magnet on here a magnet on there keeps it out of the way that's it um, that's pretty much it remote control for the fan Oh yeah, it's a bit dusty down here. To move my seat back and forward, I just undo this one and this one, same the other side, and it slides back. That's a stop because that's where I like it. And slide it back. That means I've got some room so I can use VR controllers for flight sims like AeroFly, for example. Um, it doesn't slide easily, but I've got a bit of, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, PTFV sort of plastic or whatever under there that helps it slide. As I say, Simlabs do their own now, but I don't think it lowers it down as much from what I've seen in pictures. And I like my, mine nice and low. don't really want to be any higher because I'm nearly at the top here anyway. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Just a quick video to go over. I'm sorry if I'm a bit breathy, being ill and whatnot. But um, yeah, that'll do it for now. And I'll catch you later. Cheers.